Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Online. Please uh, share this feed, share this uh, video. We'd love to connect with you um, here online. We'd love to see other people connected to us online. And you can help us do that by sharing this feed. Uh, we have a special week planned um, today. Our very own Jeff Rubin, the president of our consistory, will be sharing with us a few announcements. Um, next week is Mother's Day, and so we're still collecting those Mother's Day candles. You want to uh, send in your $10 to honor your moms, to help us uh, raise a little money uh, to support our work here at St. Paul's, as well as um, that service will be outdoors. Uh, so we're praying for great weather. We're praying for an opportunity just uh, for more of you who maybe aren't comfortable yet coming inside to join us for worship um, outdoors. We'd love to have you. Uh, for that, we're going to have a special coffee hour after, so it will be a great time. Uh, continue to buy those 50-50 tickets to support our youth, um, and uh, continue. Uh, actually, uh, tomorrow is the deadline. If you'd like to get a t-shirt uh, to join us uh, for our 5K, uh, so you can register. You'll see detail of that on Facebook, um, how you could do that, and we want to get our registration numbers up. We still need a few more uh, to hit our goal, and so I'd love for you to sign up. If you haven't already, you could walk the 5K, you could run it, jog it, uh, whatever you want, but it'd be great to, for you to participate in our work here at St. Paul's with that. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude. You unravel me with a
receive this morning's call to worship. The darkness is gone. Bright lights flood into this new day of hope. Those who went to the tomb received good news. Christ was not there. Christ is risen in our hearts, in our spirits. Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia. He is risen. Amen. Let us worship together. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For domination belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All those who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness. Declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. Now let us go before the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, lifting you up and praising your name, but also coming before you and lifting the burdens of our hearts before you. Father, we continue to pray for Becky's mom as she deals with cancer. Uh, the breast cancer, I pray that you would be with her and encourage her with the final treatments that she's going to be having as it gets closer and closer to the end. I pray that the medicine would work and the doctors would have wisdom in how to handle it and that she would be encouraged um, the closer it gets to the final treatment that she could see her grandkids again. I thank you that she's able to be outside with them right now with the good weather, but I pray you continue to also lift her spirits um, as she continues to undergo treatment. I also wanna lift up Brian, Brian and Dana Bush as Brian's brain cancer has returned aggressively. I pray that you would give him um, ease of pain and be with them as they make decisions and endure each day. I pray that you would just surround them on a day-to-day -day basis, Father God. I also wanna lift up those battling lupus, Melanie Dwyer's sister, Marianne, as well as Nicole and Kim's uh, sister, Shannon. I know that lupus is a very um, hard disease, Lord. I just pray that you be with them with each symptom that they have, with each struggle that they have, in any pain that they may be in, that you would relieve it, Father God, right now. I also wanna lift up um, Elijah Morsey and his parents, Tim and um, Samantha, Lord, just be with them as they make the decisions as his tumors have come back and he's in a lot of pain. I just pray for them. I thank you that his jaw tumor seemed to have gone down a little bit, but I pray that you would be with them as they continue to make decisions with his life, with the struggles that he's facing with, with this battle. Be with them each day and 
um, take this pain away from him, Father God. I want to lift up Kevin Holland, who has Parkinson's. Be with him as he lives with that on a day-to-day -day basis. Let the symptoms and the struggles that he faces be lightened today by giving them to you, Lord. We lift up Stephanie Taglietta, who's going through cancer. Be with her and her whole family. Um, help her through each treatment that she has, and I pray that she would uh, gain strength each day as she fights this. Be with Elizabeth Bowman as she's dealing with COVID, and I know a lot of people are. Give her encouragement and strength to get through this. We also want to lift up Diane, Lord. I thank you that she had her ablation, but I, I pray for her and give a prayer for healing as she's trying to recover and has trouble breathing. I just pray that you would just be with her and restore her lungs and her breathing and her heart to full capacity. We want to lift up Gina and her dad um, as he's preparing to undergo kidney transplant. I pray that you be with um, the whole family and I pray that the, the hospital opens up um, an appointment so that he could get in there quickly and get this done and that your hands would be on all the doctors um, surrounding that on on him and his transplant Lord and be with Gina as she is there to support them. I want to thank you for Frank Neller's cardioversion that it was successful but I also want to lift up and pray that his heart would remain in rhythm um, so it doesn't need to happen again um, and I thank you as well that Ethan has gotten his eye taken care of but I I pray that it continues to heal to its fullest capacity and be restored to 100% Lord so that he doesn't have to deal with any pain or loss of vision. Father, we wanna lift up and surround the Moore family with your strength and with your comfort and your love as they're dealing with Peter's passing um, and a brother being in the hospital. It's, it's a heavy burden to bear, Lord. I just pray that you would be with them in this time of need. Um, I also wanna lift up Amy's sister, Samantha, who has COVID in the hospital. Be with her, help her to be able to get out of the hospital and back to full capacity, Lord. I pray for everyone suffering from COVID that you would restore them and be with them in their time of need. We wanna lift up Julianne's cousin Donna. She's also dealing with cancer, that you would be with her as she fights this with the daily decisions and the, the treatments that she might have, Father God. Thank you for Julianne as an encouragement um, and loving to her. I just pray that she would be with her in that time of need. And Father, we we want to lift up Mike Neller as he goes and prepares for surgery. Um, actually, he would be having knee surgery on this past Friday. I pray that it would be successful and that he would be able to get through the healing and recovery process without too much pain. Um, we want to lift all these prayers before your precious throne. We thank you for all that you do and for hearing our hearts cry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, kids, we're going to do our kids' sermon. And today, the topic is about an open garden, how the garden um, that Christ has uh, restored, the Garden of Eden, um, is open to all. And so one of the things I want to encourage you with, kids, is to share uh, the good news of Jesus with your friends. Um, the story that um, Mr. Jeff will be telling us about is the story of the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip and how um, he came to Christ and was shared the good news. And so um, I'd encourage you uh, as you go about your day with your friends, maybe your virtual learning or you see friends in your neighborhood <clears throat> or even family members that don't know the love of Jesus, I would encourage you to talk about the love of Jesus, that they can go, your friends could go to Jesus for help on their schoolwork, help with their families and friends. They can go to Jesus anytime that he'll show them love, that he's available to them. Um, you also uh, could encourage them and share the good news that Jesus defeated death. We're still in Easter season where we're celebrating the resurrection. And so you could talk about the good news that Christ is risen, um, that we don't have to fear death. Um, some of your friends might uh, lose a grandparent or a grandma, and you could encourage them that because of Jesus, we can see our loved ones again one day, and because of his salvation. And so we want to share that good news. We're called uh, to share that good news, and I know kids are really good at sharing that good news. So I'd encourage you kids uh, to take some time this week to share the good news of Jesus with your friends, your family, and your neighbors. Now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father. Come, I will be. 
be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Come in the kingdom and the power of the glory and the glory and the glory. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. On the third day, he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. pray for uh, this morning's offering. Uh, you're welcome to give online, continue to mail in your checks here to St. Paul's. We could use your gifts. Uh, we actually this week had a, a pipe burst in our social hall and got that taken care of, although it's not cheap. Uh, old buildings are not cheap, and so we really appreciate your continued uh, giving uh, to support our work here so that we can keep uh, things moving forward and running and operating. And so I know Sometimes it's not fun to give a give a dollar to, for a pipe uh, that we never see. It's more fun to give to things like mission trips and things we see, like the organ. Uh, but other things need to be taken care of, and and the only way we take care of it is through your faithful giving. And so uh, we appreciate that. And we want to pray God's blessing upon us here at St. Paul. So let me pray. God, we thank you for every gift that has been given. God, we thank you for your provision. We thank you for generosity of of your saints here at St. Paul's. We pray that you continue to make us generous. God, continue to, to supply all of our needs here at St. Paul's as we move forward. God, give us grace in that area. Give us blessing upon blessing financially. God, may we see uh, your kingdom truly come here in Milltown as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing the doxology together. <laughs> From the Acts of the Apostles. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Kandake, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you're reading? The man replied, how can I, unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he was reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. 
He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop and they went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north at the town of Azotus. He preached the good news there and in every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. Hey, St. Paul's today, uh, we're going we to be blessed to hear from uh, Jeff, our consistory president. One of the things I'm passionate about here at St. Paul's, and I know Pastor Rich before me was allowing um, our saints here at St. Paul's to share from their heart, from the Word of God in sermons. And, and you'll see that more and more um, as we go forward, as we move out of this pandemic. Um, my heartbeat is to see a team of teachers and preachers here at St. Paul's that I develop um, you know, my, my job is to equip the saints here at St. Paul's to equip you to do the work of the ministry. Um, we are all in this together. And so, uh, part of that, you've seen Kate, uh, you've seen Jeff a couple times and, and down the road, you'll you continue to see uh, more. And if you're interested in teaching at all, um, don't hesitate to reach out, uh, to seek opportunities to do that. Jeff teaches our youth, uh, regularly. Uh, he spends a lot of time, a lot of his free time with the youth of St. Paul's. And so, uh, we want him to have a voice here with the whole St. Paul's church. Uh, as he ministers to our youth um, and our teens. And so thank you, Jeff, for that. And uh, enjoy uh, this word from Jeff Ruman. Good morning, St. Paul's. Right after college, I decided to buy a new car and thought that the best way to break in my new car would be to go on a cross-country road trip. So I found a friend to go with me and we decided that we'd start in the middle of June and the only goal was to be back in time for the summer mission trip with the youth group. Before we left, we started talking about what we wanted to do, what we definitely didn't wanna miss out on as we traveled across the country. And our general game plan was to go across the country in the North, go down the coast to California and come back across in the South. As we started to think about the sites that we definitely wanted to get to see, we realized that most of them were national parks and monuments and historical sites. And budget was one of our big concerns. So we looked into it and we found out that we could get a pass, an all access pass for $50 that would get us into all of the national parks across the country. And the pass was good for a year. So it would definitely cover us on our road trip. It was great because that meant we could go to Yosemite and the Grand Tetons and the Badlands. We could hit up Yellowstone. Uh, all the places that were on our list would be included. So we went off on our trip. We had our pass. We used it a couple times. We got to use it in Illinois at Abraham Lincoln's house. We used it in South Dakota at the Badlands. And our next stop was Mount Rushmore. Now, for those of you that have been to Mount Rushmore, you know it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you just travel and there's nothing. And then all of a sudden you get to Mount Rushmore. And as we got close, we got out the pass, made sure we had it ready to go. We pulled up to the gate and I proudly handed over the pass only to hear the gate attendant to say, that'll be $15. Of course, we balked at this and you know, the attendant had to explain that admittance to Mount Rushmore is actually free, but the parking cost $15. And if you look around, there was no place else to park. So you're kind of stuck, you had to pay the $15. Of course, in the fine print on the back of our all access pass, it said that it was for entrance fees only, and it actually specifically mentioned that it does not include parking fees. I imagine that the Ethiopian eunuch uh, kind of felt like this a lot more so, actually, it was a lot more important to him uh, when he was in Jerusalem. He was clearly a man of faith. He was reading Isaiah on the way home. While in Jerusalem, the Jews would have welcomed him as what they called a God fearer, he shared their beliefs. 
he participated in their faith, but he was a Gentile. He had dark skin. He had a physical deformity because he was a eunuch. So he wouldn't have been allowed to participate in their sacred rituals. Essentially, he had his all-access pass, his faith and his willingness, but he was denied because of what we would today consider fine print. Presumably, this Ethiopian eunuch was also wealthy. He was the treasurer for Ethiopia. He worked for the Ethiopian queen who was in charge of actually running the country. He had a chariot that was big enough for two for his travels, and he was reading Isaiah written on actual paper, all things that point to a man of wealth. But his wealth couldn't buy him passage into the Jewish faith, just like my past didn't get me into Mount Rushmore. It's also interesting to note that the eunuch was in Jerusalem at the same time that some of the early Christian church heroes like Peter and Paul were there. But God didn't choose to use these people to prove his point. Instead, he chose Philip. Now, there's two different Philips. This is most likely not Philip the Apostle. It was probably Philip the Evangelist. And Philip the Evangelist had just returned from Samaria at this time. And the only other time we see him in the Bible is a little bit later on in Acts when Paul encounters him. It's interesting that God chose to work through Philip in this story in two ways. First, directly, by sending an angel. And then secondly, indirectly, through the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of symbolism here since the direct way is more of an Old Testament method. And the indirect way is more of a New Testament method that was being explored a lot in the book of Acts. So this idea of a Gentile being welcomed into Christianity by hearing the gospel preached through the Old Testament prophecies of Isaiah brings together kind of a big God moment. No matter which way God spoke to Philip, the most important part was that he listened. Philip's faithfulness led directly to the gospel being shared and spread throughout the world. We're all called to share the good news and to invite others into the garden. And we're called to share with everyone, regardless of race, nationality, physical deformities, socioeconomic status, or any other thing you can think of. It might be something that takes us out of our comfort zone. It might feel a little overwhelming at times. I know for me, I, I would question, am I even qualified for the task? Am I worthy? Do I know enough to share the gospel? Philip gives us some really good pointers about how we can share the gospel from this passage. First, Philip came upon the eunuch reading, and he saw this as an opening to start a conversation. Second, he didn't immediately jump in and just start sharing. He asked the eunuch a question. Do you understand what you're reading? So he finds the eunuch. He approaches him in a way that utilizes what was going on in the eunuch's life, and he asks a question. This gave the eunuch an opportunity to ask for help and to set the stage for the final pointer that we learned from Philip. Philip opened his mouth and, quote, told the good news about Jesus. Philip was well-versed in sharing the gospel. He'd just gotten back from Samaria. So I take from that that we all need practice. Practice sharing with each other, with our children, with our loved ones. When we're presented with an opportunity, we'll be ready to share if we've practiced. I remember uh, in the beginning of my time on the Fish Board of Directors, we had a day-long day retreat for all of the board members. And we had a special guest speaker that came in from Family Promise, our national affiliate. And he encouraged us all to come up with an elevator pitch about the homeless shelter. And some of you may know what an elevator pitch is. For those of you that don't, essentially, imagine you're getting into an elevator with somebody and you've got the time that you're in the elevator with that person to share about something, right? So what are you gonna say in that minute of time that you have that explains clearly and concisely kind of what you're about, how you go about doing it and, and what you're asking for. Now, I knew the FISH program inside and out, uh, but when given a minute to share, it was amazing how hard it was to really concisely share the information that I felt was important and to get across to the person listening to me uh, what I needed from them or what I wanted them to recognize about the program. It's funny though, if you ask me about something about math, for example, I'm a math teacher or the Boy Scouts or even Jackson, my, my son's favorite current obsession, Pokemon, I'd be able to talk your ear off about it. And I'd be able to share every detail that you know, that I know. Now, uh, hopefully we'll have more than a minute to share the gospel with someone, but you never know, and practicing our pitch can only help. Also, I want to point out that those topics I talked about that I'd have no issue with sharing, 
uh, I, I'm immersed in those topics, right? I, I teach math every day. I talk about Boy Scouts multiple times a week, probably far more than my wife wants to hear. And Jackson doesn't let it rest. The second he runs in, he wants to talk about Pokemon and find out what we're going to do that day. So I spend time with them. And I think we could do the same in terms of the gospel. If we spend time in prayer, spend time reading the Bible, engaging with the church community, talking to others about the gospel, then we're going to be more confident and more ready to share the good news with others when we have the chance. And we'll have plenty to say. Lastly, I want to encourage all of you to lean on the indirect calling from God, the Holy Spirit. Pray that you're given words to speak to meet the needs of the person in the moment, to share the gospel in a way that reaches their heart. One of the most interesting parts about this passage is that the eunuch was reading from Isaiah chapter 53 when Philip came upon him. And you have to imagine that if the eunuch had this scroll with Isaiah written out and he was reading it on his own, that once Philip came along and started sharing with him about what the meanings were and helping him with the text, that he would have kept reading, right? He had a six-month-long journey home, essentially, so he's probably going to read most of that text. Well, a few chapters later in Isaiah, chapter 56, verses 3 through 5, it states, Let no foreigner who is bound to the Lord say, the Lord will sure, surely exclude me from his people. And let no eunuch complain, I'm only a dry tree. When the gospel is shared and it reaches the heart, our physical deformities and every other type of shortcoming no longer matter. The kingdom of Jesus is truly an open garden, ready for all who are willing to enter. Imagine the elation that the eunuch must have felt when he read that passage a few days later on in his journey, hopefully with Philip at his side still. It's amazing how the Holy Spirit can work, but the work of the Spirit wasn't done there because as they traveled along the desert road, they came along some water. What better time to be baptized and born again in your faith? At that point, God moved Philip onto his next mission, and the interaction sent the eunuch away rejoicing, most likely spreading the gospel on his own and bringing others into the garden. Jesus makes it abundantly clear that we're all welcome in his garden. In Matthew, he says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. In Luke, we learn that crowds followed Jesus, and he welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. Also in Matthew, Jesus said, for I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Notice that for Jesus, there was not a prerequisite that needed to be met. He welcomed them and he healed those who needed healing, which is pretty much all of us. It's our job to be like Philip. We don't need to know the details. We don't need to know the who, the what, the when, where, or even the how. But if we're faithful and we follow the Holy Spirit, we'll have the opportunity to spread the gospel and invite our neighbors, family, and acquaintances into the garden. Personal evangelism is achievable for all of us. Reaching one person in a conversation, over coffee, on a walk, or any other shared experience is possible for all of us. We don't need to be comfortable speaking in front of large crowds. You don't need to change your job. You don't need to go on a mission trip. Right here in our everyday lives, we have the chance to bring Jesus's love to the heart of the community by following Philip's example and letting the Spirit lead us to where God needs us.
sin rey.